Hi everybody, I just wanted to go over a few recent, a group of uh, recent articles in the news and um, a couple videos that I had put up before along with uh, talking about some other confirmations of what's coming and some Bible scriptures. So if we look at this from Express News, I don't know if it shows the place here. Um, this was published on June 18th, 2015. And it says, Asteroid Latest, NASA warns of jumbo jet sized asteroid heading Earth's way today. So we know from JPL's Near Earth Object page, if you Google that, you'll be able to see a list of incoming objects that they can detect. We know that there's asteroids out there all the time. We There's a large asteroid belt, okay, just over the other side of Mars. But randomly, these rocks get broken away from the belt, or they're trailing a comet that's passing by. So we know that there's thousands of these spatial heavenly bodies out there. And um, anyways, this one was a jumbo jet size and it was supposed to go by on June 18th. And so again, they mentioned um, NASA, JPL's website says how they're watching the close flybys. Okay, and in the latest in a string of large asteroid close Earth passes revealed with this news article in the run up to World Asteroid Day on June 30th, which aims to highlight the future risk to the planet. One 33 meter long space rock passed yesterday, today's, um, so then that was June 29th, 2015, and then on the 30th, it said um, it was a larger 46 meter um, meteor that was passing by. And then NASA experts say anything from 150 meters in length upwards would have the potential to cause global devastation should it land in the sea causing by causing tsunamis or on dry land. Scientists last week moved to quell growing fears that a monster asteroid will crash into our planet destroying humanity in late September because a lot of prophets and Christians have been having dreams and visions or have had inside information that there's going to be a large asteroid hitting um, in the Pacific in September. Okay, but they went but they have monitored asteroids the size of a bus, tower block, and jumbo jets passed by near to our Earth in the last 10 days. So even though they're quenching, you know, what Christians are saying or revealing, um, they still see the reality of these large rocks passing by us every day. All right. And then they go on to say, um, name a few that have hit, actually hit, including um, there's one in 1908, the hit in Siberia. Okay, and then they just have a bunch of links. Okay, NASA religiously monitors any asteroids or comets that are expected to pass within 4.6 million miles of the center of the Earth, which are called close approaches. It sounds a huge distance, but when they considered a went, but they are considered a potential threat because they're going off course by just a fraction could bring them in closer or even for a direct strike. And we have to remember that the sun is 93 million miles away, so anything that's 4.6 million miles away is significantly like what is that? It's like it's almost like, I bet it's, what, 6% out of 100%? It's, you know, 94% closer than the sun. And the moon is 86,000 miles away. So when it's a lonar distance, um, it's as, just as close as the moon to us. All right. Um, the lower, so they were monitoring these that were coming by close at the end of June. The one yesterday brushed past us just 1.8 million miles with today's larger one a bit further at 2.1 million miles. All right. 
let's see, scrolling down, keep, I'll leave links to these. They, of course, NASA doesn't, doesn't concur with any um, claims today that there's going to be one hitting in September or, you know, they don't predict for hundreds of years, although you'll find to the contrary on a lot of websites, even from NASA, that like they expect one in 2017 and 2020 and so forth. If we go to this next article from Express News, this was on July 29th, so just a couple weeks ago. Exclusive, could this asteroid destroy Earth in September? So they're, again, they're mention, mentioning the conspiracy theorists um, that, ha, that say that there's going to be one hitting during the last week of September. And the date most are honing in on is September 23rd or 24th due to a range of Bible codes and alleged predictions. I'm one to not agree with, um, with uh, Renee Moses, so um, she had lots of dates for the rapture that never um, came to fruition, and so I personally don't agree with anything that she has to say, but I do look at other people's um, dreams and visions, as well as the news, which you will hardly find any news articles that will give you the truth. Sorry, let me, the page stopped working. All right, so they're looking at that because the last blood moon is happening on September 28th, and there's been a lot of prophecies from Christians, and NASA still denies it, saying it's going to be hundreds of years. Um, so are there any asteroids due to come close to us during these dates? An express investigation can exclusively reveal that there are six so-called close approaches of near-Earth Asteroids due to pass within a cosmic fraction of the planet within the doom mongers seven-day predicted time scale Scientists predict it would take an impact from an asteroid of at least a little over a half a mile in length and upwards To actually kill off most of the planet or cause significant damage But something as small as 50 meters could destroy all of London um, And a hundred meters long or more could devastate a continent and create devastating tsunamis and so they're looking problem most likely at JPL, near-Earth object, list. So they have six that are on that list that are due September 23rd, 27th, and 28th. So there's three that are estimated as being up to 57, 39, and 31 meters long. In June 1908, then they again mention the Siberia one that hit and caused a shockwave Okay, earthquakes. We found the biggest rocks set to pass this year on 2015 on September 22nd and 24th. On the 22nd, two asteroids are expected to whistle past one of up to 190 meters long, the length of eight train carriages, and another cruise ship sized rock of about 280 meters long. Two days later, another whopping 270 meter asteroid will pass us. So those are the three that they see on the near-Earth object JPL list. NASA monitors massive asteroids um, that pass by sev several million miles from Earth and smaller ones up to seven miles. It seems far, but put into the context that the moon's, oh, I'm sorry, the moon is 238,800 miles from us, and our close, closest planet is Venus at 25 million miles away, so the near-Earth asteroids pass closer to the moon than other planets and their orbits vary. The furthest pass of the largest three is on September 22nd when the 280 meter asteroid is expected to whistle past at a relatively safe 14.7 million miles from us, while the 270 meter one on September 24th is much closer at 5.1 million miles. In fact, this space rock is the closest of all six objects due to pass over, the, over these days. And I'll leave a link to some of these videos here and this article. How certain is NASA about its path? Well, it gives us a condition code. They give you a code from rated from zero to nine. Zero means it's a good certainty, or it's zero means most likely there's not gonna be any 
chance of it coming close or hitting us. Okay, and then nine being very likely, you know, that it's dangerous. Only one of the six scored a zero. Fortunately, the biggest 280 meter one passing on September 22nd. All the others scored from five or higher, meaning NASA has a midway certainty on the orbital path or quite high uncertainty in two cases which scored six and seven. Remember, it can go up to nine. The most uncertain pass is the 57 meter rock on September 23rd, which has a condition code of seven, but hopefully it's estimated 18.5 million, million mile flyby and relative small sizes give us much more room for maneuver. More concerning is the cruise ship sized rock, the closest and second largest object, object due for September 24th, which scored a six. Okay, so the, I'm going to leave a link so you can read this. It talks about the Russian one in 2013, how they didn't see it until, you know, they didn't even see it coming. So they can't see all of them, especially if they're coming from the direction of the sun, which is going to cause them to not be able to see it due to the sunlight. And then there's another article here from the Jerusalem Post, which was just published on August 12th. Okay, and it says, heads up, why we may soon worry rel relatively less about Iranian nukes. Speaking about how we, sh you know, we might have to worry more about um, incoming asteroids and meteors. Uh, let's see. And of course, we just had one that hit over there in Iran, a meteor. And let's see. He's talking about the 500 days to avoid climate chaos, which I mentioned in one of my videos and how the end of that date, the 500 days, brings you to the Jewish Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, September 23rd to the 24th to be exact. Weather, weather prediction arguably has improved in recent years, but 500 days out of it is a bit far out. So why did they specifically mention 500 days to avoid climate chaos? And if you weren't aware, they, they have also been um, set up and have a program to where they're going, you know, where they're ready to shoot nukes at any incoming asteroids or comets that may be approaching to try to break them up. Okay, and then he, this article goes into talking about Jade Helm and what they're really preparing for, and then the also the Russian asteroid that hit in 2013 that they didn't see, and they're talking about in April an emergency response exercise was conducted um, in the event of a meteor hitting the earth and we have you know what is that June 30th is the uh, meteor awareness or whatever day and then they go talking about the deep impact movie and some other coincidences and it says, now don't, doesn't the prospect of a great vape rising meter make the spat between Obama and, and BB, not to mention Donald and Megan, seem pale in t insignificance? So it's just, you know, he's mentioning the fact that these are not just coincidences, but they're trying to hide something there. So going to the videos that I had, the Lord had given me visions for and a dream. Um, last August, I had a vision of an asteroid meteor. It sort of like looked like this when I was asleep of a meteor or asteroid coming in and it was like at nighttime and it was falling just like this and it was heading towards a large body of water. The Lord didn't tell me when or exactly where, but I know that it's going to happen. And then also, um, we know Efrain Rodriguez has said that there's one coming. And then there's a lot of FEMA Region 3, which is the East Coast plans, um, as well as Puerto Rico. The military has been 
um, stockpiling ammo and emergency food rations as well as now we have Jade Helm going on everywhere so what are you know we have to wonder what they're really setting up for or preparing for it's civil unrest of some sort and then I had a dream um, back in September 2014 so almost a year ago about two meteors to come and the first I'll leave a link to the vision and the dream I had, but the first, it was about to my, a, a mouse, and basically the first one that came, they were both meteors, the interpretation was, and the first one um, came close to me. It was going to be near California, and but it wasn't really going to do a lot of damage, sort of like, it would, it would do some, but it's not going to do like as much damage as the second one that's going to hit. So the first one in my dream, the Lord revealed to me that the first one would be smaller, a smaller meteor that would hit near California, close to California. And if that happens, people, um, when that happens, we can expect the second one to come, which will be further away from California, and I don't know where or when, don't have a date for these, but it's going to be bigger and do more damage than the one near California. So the second meteor will be more devastating and, and it will actually um, cause more harm. So that's what the Lord revealed to me. And then I did have a vision. I don't know exactly when. I'll have to go back and see. Let me see. Of Obama giving a state of emergency address right here December 31st I, it was a vision while I was asleep that Obama came it would look just like this and all he said was we didn't see it coming and so it was he referred to it as it we didn't see it coming and he was basically giving an emergency address that something was about to happen and I knew it had to do with an asteroid so that's what the Lord revealed to me. And then Lynn Liaz has get, was given a inside information as well as another lady, and I'll turn to her video in a moment. I'll just play a clip right here, the you know, part of her video here. Hi, it's Lynn Liaz, and I have some information for you today I just want everybody to pray about. Um, I'm not prophesying this. I'm only telling you what I found out. I'm not saying it's for sure going to happen. I can only tell you the source that told me has always given me accurate information. Um, he is in the know. Uh, he's retired uh, military. Anyhow, we've been hearing so much about an asteroid hitting the Earth. And then you have Prophet Ephraim's prophecy about an asteroid or a meteor. So, um, anyhow, I talked to my friend.
So again, the end of, you know, the last two weeks of September, according to her inside information. And then also, I put on here, I just added a video today um, to my, sorry, <clears throat> to the asteroid link in my playlist of a lady who also received an email from somebody regarding Homeland Security confirming. So let me get to that part. Today is uh, the 9th of August. It's 3.47 a.m. I received an email um, late last night and I got it this morning when I got up at 3. And I want to read it to you. It's extremely important. Um, she says, or he says, I'm not sure which one this is, but anyway, hi, Miss Kirby. My father works for Homeland Security, and he disclosed to my family tonight that because of his security clearances, he's seen document, he's seen government documents concerning a comet that's coming in September 
Jade Helm is in preparation for the civil unrest that will result of the possible aftermath of the disaster. I know you've shared what God has said to you about an incoming asteroid. Just wanted to let you know you can share this information with your readers and listeners as confirmation. Please don't use my name. My dad said there are two schools of thought. One, that it will make a direct hit, or two, that it will be so close that it causes a lot of damage anyway. He said its path is with the sun, so it's right near impossible to see. He said many other things too, but those were the most important that I wanted to get to you so you could tell people if you thought it was what God wanted you to tell them. It's a weird world we live in and a strange time to be alive. God bless you in your ministry. So there you have it, confirmation from Homeland Security that Jade Helm is in preparation for the disaster of an incoming comet or asteroid uh, due in September. I emailed... Okay, so... She had a source that also gave her that information. And so we have two different people giving information to these Christian ladies to share with other people about the possibility of the last two weeks of September having a comet or asteroid. They both said comet um, incoming during those two weeks, sometime during those two weeks of September. And that's one of the real reasons Jade Helm is set up. And if you Google Jade Helm and Texas missiles, you'll see that even Texas has nuclear missiles aimed to shoot up at the sky. So that's sort of interesting as well. Again, the Lord never gave me a date for when this was to happen, but from these two inside sources given to these Christian ladies. This is Linda Kirby, and she mysteriously, like a day or two after she made this video, which this person was able to download and copy, her YouTube channel got shut down, and nobody's heard from her since then. That was just back on August 9th. So pray for the her and we need to be praying for the Lord to protect us as well. So my advice, this isn't to cause fear or anything. This is because the Lord doesn't do anything until he gives it to his prophets. Unless he reveals it through his prophets. And we see revelation. We see what's going to happen in the end times. Whether the church is here for during, during part of it or some of it or none of it, it doesn't really matter. We know that there's going to be great devastation and destruction. When I personally prayed and asked the Lord a month or so back, what I could, what the church, the Christian church, the the faithful church, even the Church of Philadelphia, what the faithful Christians could expect to see before He takes us, before He raptures the church, at whatever point that is. I said, what can we expect before that, before that time or that day? And he gave me just one word. He said, destruction. And so even though we know that things can come upon us, we, we live in this fallen world. People die of cancer. They get sick. We lose jobs. We lose our houses. We have financial difficulties and spiritual attacks the enemy is seeking whom he can devour but greater is he that's in us amen than he that's in the world so even though we live in this fallen world and in this sinful body that we need to subject to the lord and ask him to cleanse us and forgive us and to walk by faith and not by sight not by what we see but by faith he is always with us amen and so whatever comes upon us it's for his purpose and his will. And I fully believe that he, like he's shown me with other dreams that I've shared here on YouTube, that he can protect us even through extreme circumstances. So just like he protected the Israelites crossing the Red Sea 
from the en the enemy approaching, just like he protected Daniel in the lion's den, and Noah's family during the worldwide flood that destroyed everything, just like he protected um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. The Lord was with them in there and kept them safe even from burning, even though the king had fired it up seven times hotter. So even when the enemy tries to destroy the work of God or those that are following the Lord or people in general, just to kill, steal, kill, and destroy all life, hope, and joy, the Lord is there as well, and, and he is stronger. God is the creator of all things, and he is so much stronger and more able to, he can do above what we can hope or imagine. So there is no fear in knowing ahead of time what could happen or will happen. There's no fear. It's not fear-mongering. It's just warning the people like the Lord has told the watchman to do. In Proverbs 22.3, and I've mentioned this over and over, it says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass by and are punished. If you look at different interpretations of this, it says, you know, the prudent man saw the evil and hid himself, the simple passed on and suffered loss. The wise see danger ahead and avoid it, but fools keep going and get into trouble, or they suffer the consequence. Same in Proverbs 27, 12, the Lord repeats himself in this book and says, the prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. So, again, he says the same verse. So, if we see danger, we, we can hide ourselves, take refuge in the Lord, prepare, and, you know, take precautions. But the simple, the foolish, just ignore it and they suffer for it. So, my, my warning, since he told me that hard times are coming... In October 2013 one of the things is the California earthquake but he also there's other things that are going to happen and he told me to prepare for because there's hard times coming and so we just need to prepare um, with our hearts our spiritual life walking with the Lord praying but also with food and water for unforeseen circumstances all right, in Ezekiel 33, I just wanted, I know this is a little long, but I wanted to share this. The watchman and his message. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people and say to them, When I bring the sword upon a land, and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet but did not take warning, his blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes warning will save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes away any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die. And you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn away from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Therefore you, O son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus say you, you say, If you, our transgressions and our sins lie upon us, and we pine away in them, how can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn from your sin and live for the Lord. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? Therefore
Therefore, you, O son of man, say to the children of your people, The righteousness of the righteous man shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall because of, because of it in the day that he turns from his wickedness. Nor shall the righteous be able to live because of his righteousness in the day that he sins. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, but he trusts in his own righteousness and commits iniquity, none of his righteous works shall be remembered. But because of the iniquity that he has committed, he shall die. Again, when I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, if he turns from his sin and does what is lawful and right, if the wicked restores the pledge, gives back what he has stolen, and walks in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his sins which he has committed shall be remembered against him. He has done what is lawful and right. He shall surely live. Talking about salvation. And we can't be righteous in our own, in our own, with our own righteousness. We need to turn to the Lord and turn away from those things that keep us from the Lord. Yet the children of your people say the way of the Lord is not fair, but it is their way which is it, but it is their way which is not fair. When the righteous turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall die because of it. But when the wicked turns from his wickedness and does what is lawful and right, he shall live because of it. Yet you say the way of the Lord is not fair, O house of Israel. I will judge every one of you according to his own ways. So basically, the watchmen need to warn the people. We need to also warn them of everlasting judgment or righteousness. If you're not walking with the Lord, you need to be right, and you need to ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins, and then repent, which means turn away from those things, and pray for the power of the Lord to help you do that, and to walk in his ways, read his word, pray, and to share His who he is with others. If you do that, you will live, maybe not just maybe physically when times come become hard but also for sure you will live forever with the lord you'll you'll have everlasting life your spirit will never die but if you don't if you have self-righteousness or you're wicked and you're not turning away from that and you're not turning to the lord then you can be sure that you will suffer eternal death you'll you will have eternal punishment and not have everlasting life with the Lord. So that is the main thing that we need to be focused on is being right with the Lord. And then if he chooses, he can protect you. Psalm 91, Psalm 37 and 32, he can protect us through ever, anything if it's his will for us to be here to share his good word with everyone else. God bless.